November 7th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number one. Oh god, how the hell am I gonna do it? Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fair. I can't give him too much of an uptight voice. What the fuck am I. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. Better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant. <laughs> I've seen enough ship trick to know where this is going! <laughs> yes, you can. You... Well, the... My first instinct was to do a... Like, no, I don't want to do that. That, I, first of all, I would get tired of that voice pretty quickly. <laughs> also, that seems like a way too over the top. I don't know. Especially if I have to do him over and over and over. <laughs> no, I cannot use that phrasing. <laughs> it's impolite to sleep in court, right? I suggest you try a more six significant vice, like heroin. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Oh, everything in this game makes me want to write right Edgeworth's laughter. Oh yes, I am aware. I am at least aware. I forget exactly some of the tension points that happen, but I am at least somewhat aware. Thank you, Your Honor. Defendant Miss Maya Fay was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder. We have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts in this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin then. We may call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. The only ship I say a lot is Edgeworth Francis. Eh, that's a pretty good one. Would you please state your name and profession to the court? Sir, my name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. I messed up his voice. <clears throat> the body was found by this window here. There we go. The body was found by this window here. The cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the finger found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. Well, that's kind of making an assumption immediately off the bat, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. We're still calling it a statue. And we have the floor plans of the murder scene at the Van Co. Law Offices. <laughs> Freddy bring the wick, Miles brings change, it's a match made in dungeon. <laughs> now, detective. Y yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had heard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe. Please testify to the court about this hard evidence. And we now have more testimony. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. The very moment, you say. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I didn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. <laughs> hey, Maria just threw something at me. I didn't know she could do that without being in contempt of court. What's this? My sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's testimony. She would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. <laughs> she expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. All right, let's give this a try. Is something the matter? Uh, uh, no, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. All right. Um... 
No, nothing to dispute there. Two people were there already. Five A, lawyer must be right. Yeah, it seems. The year must be five A, basically. Discount scribing her. Uh, try this one. Hold on just one second. Uh, yep. Yeah. If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? D did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly what about this sus suspicious one in Pink's claim was hard evidence? Uh, what? Are you accusing me of innuendo? Miss May isn't suspicious and she sure isn't pink, pal. Well, maybe she's a bit pink. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> the line did it before I could. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than a claims detective? Um. Hmm, I guess pressing can have its advantages. Uh, yes! Yeah! Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. <laughs> I'm not pink, I'm salmon. <laughs> Excuse me, it's fluorescent salmon. Hard evidence. After securing a suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. Now you like that? That's my hard evidence. Am I gonna have to go through a slide that's just the fucking people talking to each other? I have no more water. I will have to last. Hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Y your Honor? Why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm real embarrassed. I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Okay. Securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. One of the words Ryan was clearly written in blood. This result showed the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. When she died, the, killer, the victim wrote the killer's name. Something immediately obvious, so. Oh! Hello! Instantaneous! Objection! Detective Gumshoe. There's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Mia Fey? That's really what you're saying? What? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. Wait, backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a brunt object. The paper tapping animation, it does. She died immediately. But No butting your way out of this one, detective. Order, order. The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? When? The day after. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being? That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. The, the what? A second autopsy was performed yesterday, at my request. Death was almost immediate due to blow from a grunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! Your Honor, it's 
quite easy to imagine the victim did have time to ride to Maya. That is all. I take my bow and will exit stage ride shortly. Uh, I see. Damn you, Edward. Didn't know you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Are you about to be exit pursued by a bear? Something for you want to say? Shamity sham sham sham. We've heard some interesting reports. Mr. Edgeworth? I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly have to request a second autopsy report? I'm <laughs> ashamed, yes, I probably. Mr. Wright, the defense will refrain from personal attacks on the prosecution. Fuck, I've got the judge and Edgeworth, Edgeworth like, right next to Edgeworth? What the fuck? I've got the judge and Edgeworth right next to each other. <laughs> in, like, my vocal register, so it's like, what the hell? I keep mixing them up. No matter, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, say what you will. The evidence in this report is undeniable. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Uh, I'm just going to The court accepts the evidence. And, yeah, may have lived for a few minutes after the that's a pretty big May, if I ask you. Uh, something like an April May. Well, Your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. But another bow. I've got no spotlight on me, but I should. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its ne next witness. Poor innocent girl saw a murder with her own eyes. <laughs> but the witness, Miss April, may take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Witness your name, please, and without the wooing. April May, at your service, the woo. Said without the wooing, we could do with less of that. Order and introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. It is more refrain from wanton winking. Aw, oh, yes, Your Honor. This is not good. We've already captured the heart of every man in the courtroom, except for me. Tell us, when were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was, like, in the hotel room? Girl, but I don't know. Ooh, ooh. I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fay and Co. law offices. Uh, that's right, big boy. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, notice his bulge. Dear God, please no. Please testify what you can saw to the court, and also please no from me too. like 9 o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know. And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and she hit her. Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bit to my feet. Ooh! I have a friend offline who will want to slap me so hard for doing that so many times. No regret. Well, Your Honor, I see it is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any- Wait a minute, Your Honor! Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness's testimony now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you are Miss Mia Fey's understudy, will you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good test- Cowardly! Excuse me, isn't it cowardly to just be like, Nope, don't, no, nope, no evidence, no evidence. Yeah, fuck, if your fucking testimony would hold up, then maybe you wouldn't have had a problem. Hey, how dare you? 
Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yes, I am going to. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. Cross because I have a feeling Edward doesn't want me to. Yes, I know our techniques hit him in the... Yeah, I mean... <laughs> yes, I have some weaknesses. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. Why the fuck would you look out the window? We're gonna press this one. Why did you do that? Huh? Why? Like, why what? Well, why did you look out the window? Were you expecting to see something? Oh, well... Gee! That's it? You can't get out of this question that easily. I sort of... You know... Woo? I feel it. I have a feeling she's trying to avoid the question. Maybe I should press a little harder. Do it! See how far I can run with this. Surely you must have a reason to look out your window at that time of night. I... do. Oh, my name is not Shirley! Objection! Mr. Rutt, I will not have you badgering my witness. Badgering? You insist on needling over these trivial questions. This is not Halo, and you shouldn't be needling anyone, and I really don't think it should be allowed. Yeah, yeah, stop him! The poor girl! The poor girl. That's a honey badger. Order, Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Poor girl, what about poor me? You looked out the window. What did you see next? Yeah, that. Mousy. Fucking Mousy is not the way I'd describe me. Man. Fucking hell, I've been. No, that's not it. Press. How well, do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Yeah, well, you know. Is she had a girl that she could see? You know these things. Oh, look, I, I just know, okay? There's only one person who seemed to cry with a short, girlish figure. My testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. Right. But I question. Hold on a minute! That testimony stinks! Like the bag of shit! What? Uh, uh, Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. You lie! Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? It? <laughs> Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Hello, Gubersot. Yes, what did you mean? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about all this, I mean. Okay. If you'd really witnessed my client, Maya Fay, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. Dick! <laughs> No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me, although it does look very nice and attractive fun. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is both. Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Sure, what are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? Uh, I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, you woo. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, you woo. I'll be a good girl, I promise. <laughs> this is in the second game of the best version of Inform. Oh, is that the, uh,. Is that this one when I- is that this theme where I'm challenging? Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. Alright. Oh, is this a new one? It is new. Why is she making a cat pose? Because she's trying to be cute. I did see everything I did. The victim, the woman, dodged first the, the first attack and ran out to the right. And the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with 
with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That that clock on that kind of statue clock, the thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of the Fortnite not startle you? I I don't see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross examination. I should do an older man voice for him, because otherwise I keep mixing his up with Edgeworth. Okay. First of all... Hippie, really? Second of all... This is a statue. There are two in existence. Miss May. What you said just now was quite... Reveal. Revealing? Ooh, you'd like that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer, woo? You just said that the statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that by just looking at it. Yeet! Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too. <laughs> and he was found guilty of murder. Don't indict now, Phoenix! Order... Order, order! Yeah, that, nope, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to work on the judges. Miss May, can you explain how this was? A, how you know this was a clock? <laughs> the witness saw the murder with the witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. I don't have to work for right now. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. As you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only one, but still, good track record so far. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Whew! That was close. Without me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That's... Because I heard it? Yes, I heard it say the time. So you've been to the law offices of Fang Co. Rough is kind of off for me. Probably because they're so big and they're just kind of a direct translation, there's not any detail added. That would be my best guess. No, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. The law office of Fay Co., where the murder took place, is very close to the hotel. She could have easily heard the clock. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. Can't give it up now. I'm not satisfied because... Well, I couldn't have wrong, because I do believe that it said the clock did not have its shape. Your Honor, members of the court. It is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. It's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. How could you possibly? Just take a look, right now. Oh! See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It suffers from somewhat from the upscaling me and my look pretty off, especially. I mean, I get making it a as probably as close to direct translation as possible. I bet you there'd probably be a whole bunch of people who would be a shit. Who would just be, like, all up in arms if they changed the designs. But, yeah, they could fix that a little bit. <laughs> if they're making it pretty for an HD remaster like this, I'm, certainly nobody would, I'm certain nobody would mind if they, like, took at least cues from the later... I know there's, like, what is it? Is Phoenix Wright, Apollo Justice, whatever the hell it is? Whatever the later ones are. Would you care to explain the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. You fat? What the hell is that? I I'm thinking of the family guy like Star Wars where... Lois as Leia calls Peter as Han. You grimy, scuffling, 
nerf herder and peter just punches you can't say that you can't say nerf herder only we can call ourselves nerf herders tisk tisk eh quite a show you've put on for us mr Wright. he knew the clock was empty somehow he knew i'm afraid you've forgotten one thing however Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, you must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Oh! Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Oh, ho impossible, of course. I have proof. What? Wasn't it you who told... Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? I don't know why I'm having so much problems with fucking reading shit. I think it's just the amount of shit that I have to read through. It's been a while since I've done a visual novel. I Forgive me. <laughs> well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was moved is... Okay, I'm going to assume it's this, but let's check. Oh, wow, a transcript. It's been called in a while. Well, actually, it's something about what this time. It's a clock. It's made to look like the statue of the thinker and it tells you the time. Ah, I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. <laughs> I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry, I put some papers inside and said. Papers, is that the evidence? Then I'll leave that one up to your imagination. Okay, so yeah, it is this. Take that! Take a look at this. Hmm, it's a very cute cell phone. Woohoo, you have a girly phone. Oh, wait, 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 this isn't my phone. No, <laughs> it's not. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone. It contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order, order. The defendant cell phone? This just wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. Yeah, the detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel pretty bad for the big fella. Let's hear the conversation. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Ah, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out, sorry. September 5th, 9.27 a.m. You're on. I think this makes it clear the clock was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. Yeah. Meh. 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 My testimony. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that a weapon, that weapon, was a clock? It, it, well, it, well, is it obvious? I saw the clock before. Uh, what store is that in again? I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. Ooh. -hoo. So the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yeah, I do. First of all, another fucking a whoop. <laughs> Starting to crack face is kind of scary. <laughs> the witness claims she has seen it before. This directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that prove the witness had not seen the clock before. Admit my Larry Butt. It's him. The clock was never in any store, ever. Did, what? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. I impossible! Everything is old in stores! Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Although you might find that they're also very high-priced. Yeah. 
Oh, excuse is not on sale today. <laughs> oh, Jesus, that's terrifying. That is even more terrifying in HD. Yes, her name is April May. What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! Well, somebody has anger issues. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. That includes you in the chat. This is a court of law, and this will remain calm. Remember, you have no idea. Remember, you don't want to go with a crazy lady. Did I only like, lose it? I guess I did. <laughs> yeah. This may let me out. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? I am getting closer and closer to pirate with every single time I try to do this. What the fuck? I might as well do it. I've got nothing better. Hmm, oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Hey, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. This April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because you heard about it. The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She... she heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the finger was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. Easy wiretap. Have a look at this. <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim, Miss Mia Faye's phone, were you not? You! <laughs> Objection, Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it's not, you still have to, pro have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah? I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is the fucking phone. I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. <laughs> the music has to stop for the beep. <laughs> Mio, what's up? You haven't called in in a while. You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on for me. Again? What is it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like the statue, the thinker. And it tells you the time. Miss April May. You used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock? Am I wrong? Yeah, yeah. Objection! Your Honor, this is ridiculous. This whole thing is a shenanigan. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. She looks like she could pop out of demon souls any minute now. Yeah, uh, yeah. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? I'm turning into Mr. Krabs the further I use this voice. But I can't think of anything else. Miss May. Shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you liar. It's no fair, all of you yang up on me like that. Oh, so I'm the bad girl, is that it? Is that it? I'm not Billie Eilish. 
<laughs> that did. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. Yeah, I don't know what fuck to do here. Why the wiretap, maybe? Because it wouldn't have been her who did it. Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't this Tiffany tapping irrelevant? Yeah! Saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice, he does have a point. I know mine's more ridiculous, but still. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove that you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped your phone? Ha! Ah, I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking I'd like to hear pull that off, weren't you, woo woo? You good. Well, you're not the first man who's thought that. Of course I can, and will. You can't be serious. No way! Way, I say, way! Oh, and I'm sure you that I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. <laughs> okay, so the killing happened around 9 o'clock at night? Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. R room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee, you know, like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts and you have regular cold coffee. You could shove it in the fridge! You think Phoenix would learn to stop saying things like that? <laughs> he, uh, it's a, oh, you know what? I'll give him a pass for right now because he's still green. If he keeps doing it, then maybe I'll start to get annoyed. <laughs> I'm certain I will if that's the case. Uh, ice coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy a woo. There we go. The witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder. <laughs> Well, I wasn't talking about at the on the scene. Just fucking wiretap. You can play back a wiretap. It is my great to displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant Maya Fay commit murder. No, they're going to just let her walk away. There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Uh, well, come on, think of something. Uh, fucking bellboy is witness. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've something quite low enough already. Objection. If you know what I mean, you will. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the with the killing. Yeah. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Uh, okay, first of all, our prosecutor's really allowed to fucking call that kind of shot. Because this is how that system is screwed. Condition. If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. I was not going there! Bitch, I'm just trying to prove that somebody was connected. And thereby, you must also accept that it's fucking day one! That is my condition. What? I'd better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What do I do? 
fucking do it. Alright, I've got nothing to do well except for everything. I guess my first previous assessment was wrong. But understood, I accept your condition. <laughs> Prosecutors can pretty much get away with murder, pun intended. <laughs> Right to do it, my trap. I will now play a blue eyes white dragon and blow your life points away. Ah! Uh, away. Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. <laughs> I assume this is based on the Japanese court system, so thanks for that. That's still pretty bad, if you ask me, though. <laughs> I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. <laughs> hey, only some of the prosecutors murder people. <laughs> he certainly does look like a bad boy. You expected something different, sir? I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, well, first of all, you could set the fucking thing down on the bench there for a the moment. The witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. This may room service. I am the head bellboy at the Flying Gatewater Hotel in business for four generations. I'll have you know I actually serve President Mixon. I received a call after eight o'clock. I believe I received a call about after eight o'clock in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for a nice coffee to be brought to her at nine o'clock on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the rest of the time. Wow, your face looks naughty. He's to pulling up and I feel naughty. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. Yeah, he's totally looking at the boob. <laughs> I see. The defense may begin its cross-examination. <coughs> Excuse me. You're right. I'm ready. I hope. This is it. I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now. Maya will be finished. Okay. Boy, oh boy. Uh, we see what we call. Uh, after 8 o'clock in the evening for my guest, Miss May. Guess for an iced coffee to be brought to her at 9 o'clock on the dot. Why? 9 o'clock on the dot, you say? Yes, I confirmed that detail several times. She was watching a program on the TV and wished to drink after she had finished, so... I believe it was Survivor. Nine o'clock, the time of the murder. Precisely the rest of time, of course. You understand it's a weird amalgam of Japanese and U.S. courts, the caveats that all crimes are tried within two days and all trials last no longer than three days, at which point if no verdict can reach the defendant is auto -due. That's harsh. I hope it explains why later. Precisely 9 o'clock, then. Precisely, exactly, and most definitely, sir. 9 p.m. Do you need me to get a thesaurus and explain to you more versions of it? How can you be so sure? But Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought there. Oh, bellboy, teehee, I'd like iced coffee at exactly 9 o'clock. Ooh, ooh. You disgust me as much as you, sir, but that is what... Well, the record. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of nine. Why would she be so pe peculiar about the cat? Then, I stopped the door. I guess Miss May herself. You are sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing manifestation of mine. Are you trying to become a recurring character and failing? How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought room service, sir. She, the, the, the guest, for, the, favored me with a, the, the embrasse, sir. I never forget a jest. <laughs> embrasse? Is that first for embrace? To be fair on them, most cases don't get the trial is usually negotiated before that appearance. Okay. It, it's French for kiss, sir, but not French kiss, sir. More of a peg on the cheek. Why would 
she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by my grim demeanor, sir. Give us a moment that I shall never ever forget, sir. They've given points for its efficiency, but it's stacked against defense turnies and suspects. I mean, the whole premise of the game is all of these clients are falsely accused. Isn't there also something else in, like... I think I've heard somewhere else that's also, like... If it is based on a mixture of Jap of Japanese and American ones, it's like they fucking hate defense attorneys. One of them does, because I forget exactly what it is, but yeah, it's like it's slighted against the defense attorney because they just do not like them, period. I forget if it's something about the immorality of the I fucking don't remember. I think I heard it somewhere, so you know what? Take that with a grain of salt. So that's pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. He has a big enough chest, he probably would have remembered anyways. Ah, it's no good. There's nothing there. Is that it? Tis, tis. Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm, it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? Protest. Wait, please wait. Yes, does the defense have something else to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. The charade of justice has gone on long enough. These shenanigans must come to an end. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright, I'll give you one more question. That's all. Here's a question. Have fun with it. Okay, this is really it now. Last chance. Do I ask him? So... Check in... He asked a lot about room service. I will save here. I forget if I want to do a check in or room service here. Check in could hide shit, so I think I want to ask about room service. I think I might be giving too much credit to Capcom to think his attorney is trying to make some sort of statement about either the U.S. or Japanese justice system. But I imagine there's at least some Japanese cultural influence somewhere. I wouldn't be surprised, considering the game was originally Japanese, if they had, if it was a commentary both on their own and non-U.S. For all I know, it could be a thing about police arresting the wrong person too early and then a thing on the Japanese as to, the, as to a court system. Who knows? Let's ask about room service. Uh, tell me again about it. room service. Uh, again, sir. At exactly 9 o'clock, I delivered room service to Miss May in room 303. The guest had requested iced coffee. $18 worth of charge, as I recall. I see. Huh? $18? Doesn't that seem a bit expensive? Uh, yes, well, iced coffee for two, you know. If we don't skip on the ice, sir. That sounds like you'd be getting... That sounds like you're overcharging if you're not skimping on ice. More ice, less coffee. Why would you, why would you be bragging about not skipping on the ice? Ugh. What did he say? What did you say? <laughs> That's why I always order my drinks without ice. I like a little. I will tell them little ice or less ice than usual. And I'll usually get a little bit more drink, but it's still nice and cold. Yeah. Oh, rather quite. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Was someone else staying in Miss May's room? Objection. I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. Witness will answer the question. I've heard better out of you, Edgeworth. I'm disappointed in you. Yes, I, I see. But why did you not mention this in your testimony? 
Well, sir, you, you didn't ask. Well, that's the point of it, isn't it? You're supposed to tell us without asking. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. But, yes, quite, I indeed. It was the uh, good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... who <laughs> this blush is my sister. My god, yes, he's been going on and on and on. That being said, I will also admire his dexterity for managing to blush and get startled and excited while still holding the tray. And not upsetting that fine plate of cookies. Yeah. He asked me not to mention if I wasn't specifically asked. So. What? Yeah. You, you fool. Done it. I've what? No, you you only got you only managed to evade losing right now, Phoenix. It ain't over yet. <laughs> He's very good about it. Man is dedicated in that job, bringing a load of critical. Yeah, he could have set the thing down somewhere. Miss April Trey checked. <laughs> Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man. <laughs> the tray is the source of all his power. <laughs> Correct. Yes, sir. Then when you brought them room service, you didn't see the man in the room? Uh, that's right, sir. Hmm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. <laughs> go, go, gadget, room service tray. Go, go, gadget, spill a cup of tea all over Phoenix Wright for me, would you? <laughs> <laughs> well, he is Bellboy. That is true. They've only been calling him by a moniker. They haven't actually given him a name. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright? Who is this other person? Simple. It was... The man with Miss May. The man who checked in with Miss May. <laughs> Your Honor! As has been previously revealed through previous shenanigans, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. Yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. Why, what a convenient little setup, but it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. <laughs> Upstart. Amateur. These accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into the matter fully. <laughs> I swear to God, I hope Mr. Webster was the next person in that shenanigans. <laughs> Am I understood there are to be no more shenanigans in this courtroom? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. It is all today for the trial of my fate. Court is adjourned. <laughs> oh, we're still in the course. Defendant lobby number one. Mr. Wright, you were amazing in there. Really? Aw, that was cute. I think I might be your newest fan. Oh, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> Again, that other attorney was pretty cool, too. Huh? That face of his, his eyes wide and his trembling lips. The scent sure is up my spine. Why are you going gaga over the man who tried to fucking get you accused of murder? If you say so. So, what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Uh, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May, he's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm gonna find out more about this man. 
You think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis. Don't worry, I'll find him by tomorrow, I promise. I'm counting on you. As for a full record of April May's testimony, I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. Now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. To dodge an attack that ran to the right, she was caught and struck. I don't know how much this will good how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, I'm gonna hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in that detention center, and it's up to me to set her free. Okay. Gonna give me a chance to save? Yes, it will. Cool. Okay. This could be another very long section, so I think I will save the end of two for... T I'm pretty sure it's the end of two for tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Next week. So, yeah. That'll be all for today, because, yeah, otherwise... I also need to give myself... I also need to give my voice a break. <laughs> the judges and a whole bunch of other ones are going to be very, very difficult to keep up. <laughs> um, But, yeah, so... Yeah, that was at least the start of Phoenix, right? Um, if I remember correctly, there's four mains and there may be a fifth, so I will be, uh, probably going through all five cases. Um, so yeah, this is fun. It is, it's been, I will need to work on my visual novel, uh, establishing characters and voices and probably need to work on those voices next time. So yeah, that's, that's quite a bit of stuff that I have to do in preparation for next time, but still, um, shouldn't be too bad, at least. Uh, I do like doing these, and I'm so glad I'm actually finally doing this, and yeah, hopefully I don't, hopefully it keeps up kind of like this, where I've kind of remembered some details, but it's still enough of a challenge that I do kind of have to think through what's going on, because there's a lot of that stuff about the actual details of the cases that I don't remember, even though I do kind of remember, like, to a certain extent, content. But, yeah, so... Again, unfortunately, that does make mean this is not going to be completely a blind playthrough, but it is going to be, hopefully, still an interesting one. Anywho, that is all for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to XH, Gooberslot, and Doan for hanging out in the chat. And until next time, I will see you all then. Take care.